And he was a dog, no, not kidding. He was a little bit sick. And I think he was kind of sad we're leaving the weight room area. And I talked to him. He said, hey, I'm going to take a week off. It wasn't COVID, was it, I hope? No, it was not. I got tested. Okay. That's good. Uh, so, fine ducky. Fine ducky. One other thing. Mr. Shoemaker's mentioned a couple different times. After you score a touchdown, there's an extra point or extra points. Why do they award more points for running or passing the ball in? Two. Than they do for just simply kicking it in. One. But it's a heck of a lot harder. Oh, yeah. It's a heck of a lot harder to run the ball in or to pass the ball in than to kick it. Once you start watching football, you'll see how most of the time it's pretty easy for those guys to kick it through the uprights. Much harder to run it in from, what, three yards out? Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make that point. You guys ready? Absolutely. A little bit of it. Like Mr. Mitchell said, some X's and O's. Let's do it. Hey! What if we icky shuffled our way all the way over to the camera? Well, you got to give some history on that one. Hey! Ooh. Football! 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, Football City. You can see we are excited here in Football Central. The locker room is still just as empty, but we got on the board for you some X's and O's. All right. In our wonderful world, of football, our board happens to be shaped just like a football field. There are 100 yards on a football field and then capped with two end zones. Each end zone is 10 yards long and on the end or the sides of the fields are the out of bounds lines. And the player with the ball must remain in bounds for the ball to advance. Now, how, how wide is the field, Mr. Schumann? 50 yards. 50 yards wide. 50 yards wide. So, we're going to come up here, and I am going to show you a little bit about the rundown on the field. I don't think it'll work. Got to be close. Got to be close. Sir. Okay, right there is perfect. Thank you, sir. All right. As we see, end zone here usually has the team name, okay? The opposite end zone has the other team's name. And then five yard increments all the way down, the five, the 10, the 15, all the way to the 50, which is the middle of the field. And then it goes back down 45, 40, 35, 20, all the way down. In football, X's and O's signify the offense and the defense. The O is the offense, the X is the defense. So if we were to signify that the O is the offense, this would be a somewhat standard formation for a regular football game. And this is the offense and the defense, and they are in what's called a 4-3 defense. There are four linemen for the defense and three linebackers. Now, we're going to go through these positions and give you just a general overview. And then afterward, we've got a great video that's going to break down each position. So we're going to go pretty quickly here. Okay? The ball starts right here where the center, the center, the middle of the offensive line is and he snaps the ball to the quarterback. On either side of the center are the offensive guards. Didn't have enough room, so I wrote it right there for you guys that are copying down at home. All right, offensive guards, and they protect the quarterback from these defensive tackles that are trying to run through and clobber him, all right? The guards protect the quarterback. They are his guards. Now, you also have the defensive tackles that line up against the defensive ends who are much more athletic. So the tackles are usually bigger and more athletic than the guards. They are able to protect the quarterback from these guys coming around the corner and trying to cream it. So the way it works is you got an entire line of blockers. You have uh, a tight end who is a hybrid between a lineman and a receiver, which means he can catch the ball. And then you have two wide receivers. The wide receivers are usually fast or tall or athletic people that have great hands and can catch the ball because they're the quarterback's number one targets when they receive a pass. And then you have the fullback and the halfback who are in charge of running the ball right up the defense's gut. All right? The fullback is usually a bigger, stronger, 
running back that is charged with getting short gains, if it's third and there's one yard to go, you give it to the big guy and he tries to rumble in. All right? If it's first, second down, you might hand it to the halfback and he's usually a little bit more athletic and can run all over the field and try and shake and bake and run and gain lots and lots of yards. And I'll bet you this, one thing I can guarantee is we're gonna see Barry Sanders highlights at some point in this unit because he, in my opinion, is the best running back of all time. Stopping short of the line for the defense, you have two big, huge defensive tackles. These guys are usually six foot four, 300 pounds, big guys that try to clog the middle and jam up everything. And then you have the fast linemen, the defensive end, their job is to come around and keep the play inside and not let the fast guys get outside and break a play wide open. Backing the line, backing the line is the linebacker. What a concept. The linebacker, you have a linebacker that plays in the middle. He's the middle linebacker and two outside linebackers. And covering the wide receivers are usually two guys who are easily as fast as the wide receivers. Sometimes, maybe they don't have as good as hands, but they're nice, aggressive, physical positions called the cornerbacks. Then you have the strong safety, who is a <clears throat> athletic, strong, hard-hitting safety that usually plays right along behind the linebacker. He can move either which way and cover for run and also play secondary help for any of the receivers or tight end that comes across. And this guy right here, the free safety, he's the guy, they say, never let a player get behind you. That's the goal of the free safety. Someone gets behind the free safety, it's a guaranteed touchdown because he's the last man standing. So, lots of great positions. We'll learn more about them as we go into the next video. But just so you see how the field is set up, you got an end zone, you have 100 yards in between, and another end zone. So, if the quarterback were able to pass or run the ball and cross this line, end zone line, and get in, that's a touchdown, six points. They then would kick either an extra point or run one in or pass one in for two points. If the defense is able to get the offense back to their side and push them all the way back in their end zone, then that's two points or a safety for the defense. All right? And also, you can kick it through the uprights, which we don't have on our board, but you'll get a chance to see at some point in time. So, general stuff about a football field. We'll go into more depth in the next video, but just want you to get a feel for how the football X's and O's look. There's the Heisman. <laughs> that was the Heisman move. <laughs> All right, let's go back, gentlemen. A lot of knowledge we gotta give these kids. A lot of football knowledge. What's a down and out? What's a post play? We'll learn What's about the routes play? pretty soon. What's a double reverse? A lot of knowledge these kids need. So, how many players on each team, Mr. Mitchell? You know, I ask my kids that. And they got it. They knew what it was. I, you know, I've, I've been throwing a little bit of football at my kids already, and they knew it was 11. 11, actually. Although one kid said 12, and I was like, only if you're playing in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> only if you're playing in Canada. One way to remember what Mr. Shoemaker was saying on that board is there's a mirror concept. So the offense lines up, and you can kind of tell he threw it up kind of like a mirror. One thing about the defense, they can move. The offense really can't move. So it's kind of a weird concept how the offense sets up, the defense kind of mirrors them. Not always, but usually reasonably close. Yeah. There's usually a man over another man. So uh, having said that, switching gears a little bit, I'd like to go to the sports factor. Sports factor, what question you got for us this video? All right, so we're going to go, we're gonna go a little history here, okay? Way back when there was a team named the Baltimore Colts. Ooh. They're now called the Baltimore Ravens. And that's another story about how the Colts became the Ravens. And a lot of people in Baltimore are still very upset about what happened in that one. Late at night with a bunch of big 18 wheel trucks <laughs> sneaking out like thieves. I don't want to go there right now. Anyway, Baltimore 
played the New York Jets Ooh. in Super Bowl three. I told you from the last video that that's one of the reasons I love the New York Jets. I was a New Yorker. I grew up by Joe Namath on my wall in a poster. He played against a quarterback from Baltimore who was considered one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Who was that quarterback? Well, he was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I see a memory uh, sign every time I go back to Pittsburgh to see my grandmother right down the street from his house. A great quarterback leading a great football team, although they didn't get the win against John Lewis and the Jets. Wore those big black high top. Remember those? I so like that. Kids in my neighborhood used to wear those big black high tops. Those That's how good that quarterback was. Those were fleets. How about you, Jolly John? What's your question? Well, Shame on you if you didn't know your local football team was the San Francisco 49ers who played at the Levi Stadium right next to Great America in Santa Clara, California. We're going to keep it going with a little bit of football knowledge here. And I want you to answer this question here. It's a little bit of a tricky one. Yeah. It pops in my mind because Mr. Mitchell's always talking about the Jets. Well, the Jets are based out of New York City. That's where Mr. Mitchell's from, Yonkers. But they play in a different state. What state do they play in? What state is their stadium in? Interesting, interesting. Before I tell you a quick joke, because I know you guys can't wait, I've got a question for you guys. <laughs> we talked about our favorite NFL team last video. This video, what is your favorite collegiate team? Your favorite college football team, and why? Mr. Mitchell, favorite college football team, and why? Well, you think it would be the team, the team would be the college I went to as a kid, but I went to San Francisco State, and the Gators? I went to the, the Gators were the team, but the Gators were, they weren't a very good football team. In fact, their whole the football department got shut down by my senior year. So I'm not going football with the Gators. Sorry, San Francisco. And plus, you know, they, they were never in Division Two. It just doesn't have the the, the, the notoriety of, of what you see on TV, the Division One teams. So I'm going back again to my New York days. When I was a kid, I grew up in this Irish-Italian neighborhood. And I'm very Irish. With a name like Sean, you gotta be Irish, right? And my mother's maiden name was O'Byrne. So there you go, it's on the back right there. So, what great Irish football team was really, really good when I was a kid? Notre Dame! The Fighting Irish! Well, mine... <laughs> oh. oh, he's going to try again, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> there you go. But we, we want to we test Mr. Shoemake's patience here. We're going to make him go last this time. My favorite collegiate team is the Oklahoma Sooners. Why... I guess because my dad went to school there. He was a wrestler at the University of Oklahoma. And so I grew up watching Oklahoma football. And it was a good day in the Warren Hickwick house if the Oklahoma Eagles won, the Oklahoma Sooners won, and the Dallas Cowboys won. That was a good weekend at our home. So, Oklahoma Sooners. Tuck the ball. All right. I like the great Penn State Nittany Lions. They are the team that I like because Mr. Shoemaker went to Pittsburgh every summer. His family's from Pittsburgh, and I like the blue and white look of them. They were ferocious, and they were known throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s as linebacker U. And as a Steelers fan, and as a hard-nosed football fan, I just like smash-mouth football and hard-hitting hits and they provided that. Little did I know that my family would become upset at me because they liked Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh, the Pitt Panthers, which was maybe two minutes away from my grandmother's house. You could see the stadium from her house. I didn't know any better at seven years old. So when I became a Penn State fan, they all chastised me. But you know, as I've taught you, and as Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Morton Henwick have taught you, stick to your guns. If you like something, Stick to your guns. Don't not like it because someone else likes it. Don't not like your friend because, well, Johnny doesn't like my friend, so I don't like him. If you like something, stick to your guns. Be loyal to your decision. Excellent. Hey, guys, you're going to want to throw a flag at me after I tell this joke, but you know what? I'm going to tell it anyway. 
What kind of tea do football players drink? What? Penalty. Oh. <laughs> Throw the flag in. Throw the flag in. Hey, think about flags and being called for penalties. I want to share a quick principle with you. Don't be a drama twinkie. You know, I'm sure these two probably got flagged a lot in games. Because they're probably pretty aggressive. I got my share of penalty flags thrown on me too. The one thing you don't want to do, and you guys know this, if you get a penalty flag thrown on you, and you get up and you become a drama twinkie, and it's like, look, right there's what he's doing. You know what I'll do as a referee? You better come, and I'm going to throw another flag. So now, it's 15 plus 15, it's a 29-yard penalty, or a, what is it? 30-yard penalty. You want to keep going? I'll throw another flag. That's 45 yards. You kill your team when you're a drama twinkie. So listen, whether you're on the field or you're off the field, don't be a drama twinkie. Just deal with the circumstances around you. Stay calm and cool and collected. That usually works best. All right? So don't be a drama twinkie. And many of you had a twinkie. You kind of break them open in the middle. They're gooey in the middle, kind of gooey and white. You break that open. And and you're wondering, it's gooey, it's just soft, it's sweet, and you just keep it. <laughs> Woo! What is going on here? What are we doing here? We're building healthy relationships. And what's the purpose of Brother Art? HR Square. Honesty, respect, respect responsibility. responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be a drama twinkie. Push hard when times get rough, and keep on pushing. Be a better you today than you were yesterday. Push hard, three.